Hello friends. In this video lecture, we will be discussing a topic from General Microbiology Unit 1. And the topic of discussion will be Archibacteria. So before we discuss about the Archibacteria, let us discuss about some uh, initial classification or you can say the traditional classification. From the very beginning, uh, there were only two kingdom classification was there which included plants and animals. So there were two distinct groups of living beings uh, that were based on the um, photosynthetic capacity and uh, the ability to move or the movement. So on the basis of photosynthesis and movement in the organism, they were categorized into uh, two distinct groups that is uh, either plants or uh, you can say the animals. But uh, the position of algae which was immobile but photosynthetic they were also kept in plants. If you talk about the fungi that was non photosynthetic that was also kept in plant. So this entire system of classification was not satisfactory. Then came the four kingdom classification given by Copeland and in this case you can see there are inclusion of two more terms Monera and Protesta you can see over here. So he gave the four kingdom. Initially we were having Plantae and Animalia so he included a Protesta and a Monera. In case of Monera, all the prokaryotic organisms having the incipient nucleus including bacteria and blue-green algae were uh, included and in case of you can say the protista, this term protista was given by Ernest Haeckel. So Ernest Haeckel included uh, generally the eukaryotes uh, which have the photosynthetic capacity as well as the non-photosynthetic organism and he included protozoa, algae and fungi. So this is the, you can say, the four kingdom classification of Copeland and there were four kingdom. You can see uh, Protista over here, Monera, Plantae and Animalia. But all these four have the same common origin or you can say the same uh, progenote. Okay. Now let us come to the five kingdom classification. Look here, it is five kingdom classification and it was proposed by R. H. Whittaker. So Whittaker gave the five kingdom classification and in his classification also like the Copeland, Monera is there, Protista, Plantae, Animalia but he included fungi as a separate kingdom. So he separated fungi from the all other four kingdoms. So likewise as I told you in the previous slide that Monera includes the prokaryotes uh, mainly the uh, BGA and uh, uh, bacteria. In case of uh, protista, generally the eukaryotic organism was included in plantae having the chloroplast, uh, pteridophyte, gymnosperm, angiosperms were included. In the fungi, these are actually the heterotrophic organism uh, which were the absorptive mode of nutrition. And in kingdom animalia, as you can see, that multicellular heterotrophs and eukaryotic cells. So you can go through this slide if you want the details. I am just telling you these kingdom of classification just to tell you how the organisms were classified from the very beginning. From the plants and animals, then Copeland four kingdom classification, then uh, five kingdom classification by Whittaker. So if you can see over here, then a three domain system came into existence where these five kingdoms were merged. Now you see over please. This is domain bacteria, this is domain archaea and this is domain eukarya. The domain bacteria is also known as the eubacteria. So you can say one domain is over here, domain archaea is over there here and domain eukarya is over here. That means this eukarya, it is, it is merging the kingdom fungi, kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia, right? So you can see that domain is a larger, you can say, the group or the larger rank from the um, kingdom. There were uh, five kingdom and now the three domains. And all these three domains have a common ancestor or you can say the Luca or the last universal common ancestor. This is the same um, progenote from where these, uh, you can say, the five kingdom or three domains have arisen. So now I think that things are clear to you. What are the five kingdom classification? And what is the three domains, right? So five kingdom were uh, Monera, uh, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. And all these three were merged into three domains. This is Eubacteria, Archibacteria and Eukarya. Is it clear? Three domains, Eubacteria, Archibacteria and Eukarya. Now it is clear to you that where is Archibacteria or the domain Archaea. So this slide is just to tell you that what is the Archibacteria, what is the domain Archaea and how it is concerned with the all other kingdoms 
and what are the three domains and all these three domains have a common ancestor that is known as the leuca or last universal common ancestor this is progenote now i think the things are much clear to you now let us come to the all the uh, three domains and there was a scientist known as the uh, Carl Woos. Uh, he was from the University of Illinois. So he clustered the kingdoms as I told you into three domains and the domains were as eubacteria, archibacteria or archaea and uh, eukarya. And this was done on the basis of the sequence of uh, ribosomal RNA genes. So you can see over here and you can just get some material for your um, notes also so you can see the archibacteria these are also single cell prokaryotes right single cell prokaryotes but they lived in the harsh environment and they are from the very beginning they are ancient archaea is there from ancient from the very beginning so now if we talk about the archibacteria or archaea so how they are distinct from eubacteria so their cell wall lacks muramic acid and peptidoglycan and ribosomal proteins are usually acidic and we can just categorize archibacteria you can say in three types or three subcategories one is known as methanogens right so methanogens are actually the methane makers so these are found as uh, anaerobic forms and they produce methane gas from carbon dioxide and these bacteria are also seen in the uh, stomach of the cattle and they are also seen in the marshy area or their area which are free of uh, oxygen so they are found where the uh, oxygen free habitat uh, they are also they play a, a good role in uh, biogas plant also because they produce methane gas these are strict anaerobes and they die in presence of oxygen so they are strictly anaerobic and if the oxygen is present they are unable to survive halophiles Halophiles means they are uh, salt lovers or they have affinity for the salt. Salt means the higher concentration of uh, sodium chloride. So, halobacteria are also uh, anaerobic forms and they are found in those habitats where the, you can say the medium has high percentage of uh, sodium chloride. So, then the third category is thermoacidophiles. They are heat lovers. These are aerobic forms of bacteria and they are found in the hot sulfur springs where the temperature is very high. You can see 80 degrees centigrade, they are very high and they also survive in the uh, medium having the acidic pH or you can say the pH up to uh, 2. So, they can also survive in the high temperature under anaerobic condition and in low pH or you can say the acidic pH. So, you can see that these are the harsh environments, right? High temperature is harsh environment. Highly acidic medium is harsh environment. High salt concentration is harsh environment. No oxygen excessive of carbon dioxide is harsh environment. So, these are archaea bacteria. Actually, these are the ancient bacteria, oldest bacteria. They survive from the very beginning. That's why these are known as the archaea bacteria or archaea. So, now let us see that uh, what are the features of archibacteria and how they are different from the other bacteria. So, if we talk about uh, their 16S rRNA uh, molecules, so uh, some of the bacteria will show similar kind of this 16S rRNA, they are categorized as RC bacteria, but they differ greatly from other bacteria or you can say from their from other eukaryotic organism. Their walls do not contain any peptidoglycan, but a range of other unique polysaccharides. So, you can see over here that their cell membrane is a single layer, single layer, uh, showing the presence of hydrocarbon and glycerol chains. No bilayer of phospholipid is uh, present. Now, their ribosome are insensitive to chloramphenicol. If you talk about the antibiotic action, uh, it is insensitive to chloramphenicol. As we have already discussed that their wall and cell membrane is different from other bacteria and they inhibit extreme environments as we have discussed earlier that they survived the harsh environments and included methanogens, halophiles, thermoacidophiles and they represent a very ancient lineage. They are uh, uh, present on this earth from the very beginning. So, they diverge from the eubacteria at a very early stage in the evolutionary process as we have seen in the previous slide that a common prigenote. We have discussed about the uh, leuca, right? Now, uh, the uh, 
Carl Woos, we have discussed about the uh, CR Woos. So he discussed about the rRNA genes, ribosomal rRNA, and he distinguished about the uh, domain system and he gave the uh, three domain or you can say the archaea, eukarya and uh, eubacteria. So rRNA is uh, ubiquitous in nature and it is a product of highly conserved genes. So on the category of this or you can say that with the help of molecular and biochemical techniques, the study of protein synthesis machinery, rRNA, these three uh, domains were uh, recognized. Okay. Now we can see that the domain archaea, uh, I have given here some of the, you can see the, some of the references also, uh, Carl Wu's reference in nature, of his paper in nature. So uh, this domain is divided into two phyla, you can see, the Uri archaeota and Crane archaeota. You can read over here, this domain uh, archaea is divided into two phyla. This Uri archaeota, it includes strictly anaerobic methanogens. Halophiles and thermophiles uh, and thermophiles, right? And in Crane archaeota, it includes uh, thermophiles, which are originally called as the thermoacidophiles, and they are sulfate metabolizing members. So you can see that how this phylum is divided into, how this domain is divided into uh, two phyla. So on this slide, you can include some of the characters of uh, U archaeota and uh, Crane archaeota. So, this is Uri archaeota, this is Crane archaeota, these are the two phylums of the domain. You can write down few features from here and then few distinguished features of archaeobacteria. You can go through this slide and you can include in your uh, uh, notes that they, their cell wall do not contain peptidoglycan. Uh, the sequence of uh, rRNA is common to each other but they differ from those of uh, bacteria and eukaryotes. The ribosome are insensitive to chloramphenicol and uh, the three groups which are halophiles, thermoacidophiles and methanogens, we can oversee some of the example that the uh, sulfobolus bacteria which thrives in acidic medium and the uh, methanogenic members are like methanobacterium, methanococcus. So these are the some of the example. Hyperthermophiles are like pyrodictium uh, growing at 110 degrees centigrade and obligatory it is uh, anaerobic form so this is the uh, you can say that uh, a few characters of the uh, archaeobacteria which you can divide into halophiles thermoacidophiles and methanogens so thank you